The video you're about to watch was recorded with my new camera and my new capture card and unfortunately I haven't worked all the kinks out of it yet. I don't know what Ray Davies is doing in there, but it's messing with stuff and as a result there's lots of cracking and popping, we dropped a lot of frames, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, there are plenty of folks on Twitter that are offering to help, but ultimately I spent a lot of time this weekend just trying to get this video recorded and so this was the third attempt at it and finally I just gave up, so please be patient. Uh, what you're going to watch, I'm happy with the content, but the actual presentation, the audio video leaves a little bit to be desired. So, you know, enough of me apologizing, on with the show. Hey everybody, Matt Cole here. Wow, am I glad to be done streaming. Enough of that, we kind of went overboard a little bit, I think. Uh, we maybe do a video later on talking about why we stopped streaming, but I was super eager to get back to running the game, so this is the next running the game video. Although technically this video isn't about running the game, this is the minis video. It's about how to make your game look pretty. I was gonna do one video on minis and terrain and then another video on running the game, tactical combat. But I think we have enough to talk about just with minis. So today we're gonna to talk about where to find minis online, where to get nice minis, where to get lots of minis cheap or a few minis expensive, and where to get minis painted or whether to paint them yourself. And we should start by saying you don't need minis to play d and I know lots of people play D&D without minis, that seems weird to me, but only in the sense of being literally unusual. My friends and I used minis when we started running back in 19, when I started playing 1985, 1986, we all used minis. I think some people perceive using minis as being old school and some people perceive not using minis as old school, but I guarantee you they use minis back in 1974. They used a line of minis. Actually, they had fantasy minis before they had D&D because they used a line of Middle Earth miniatures. So they had elves and dwarves and orcs and all that stuff. When I started back in 1985, we had minis. Uh, we didn't have good minis. We didn't have a lot of minis. We were we were kids. We didn't have any money. So for instance, uh, we used dwarves for all the bad guys because it was the only mini our friend John had more than one of. So anytime we fought a lot of goblins or orcs, they were always dwarves. I had a mini for my character. It looked basically like this, except the character was drawing his sword. I loved that character. I loved that mini. And these were unpainted minis, and they didn't have as much detail as they have now. But I think that I enjoyed that period. In fact, I think I recommend do not wait to play D&D until you have a great collection of miniatures. I think that's basically the lesson of this entire series, right? Don't wait until you have everything just the way you want it to get started. Just get started now. Play with M&Ms and Fig Newtons if that's all you have. You won't remember the combat years from now as being, I did 12 damage and got to eat that M&M. You'll remember it as my barbarian hewed the orc in half with his great axe and the orc's guts spilled out as he gasped his last breath between green lips. Okay, enough of that. So the point is that you don't need minis to play. I use minis, I love using minis, I have a lot of really nicely painted minis, but I do think there's something to be said for using your imagination. I think your imagination wins every time. I know that sounds like something parents tell their kids when they can't afford an Xbox, but I really do believe that your imagination is better than anything you could put at the table. I happen to like using minis, but I encourage you to use whatever you have. All right, on with the show. I wanna put my best advice up front so you don't have to slog through the video to find it. I think the easiest, cheapest way to get a lot of pretty good minis is to go on eBay and look for lots of pre-painted plastics. I don't mean lots as in a bunch. I mean, I mean, I, I guess that works, right? I mean a lot, an auction lot, because Wizards of the Coast has been making minis for D&D for like 12 years now, I think. They make boxes of pre-painted plastics and it's like buying a box of magic cards. You open them up and you get some commons and some uncommons and some rares. There used to be a miniatures battle game associated with this and that made sense to me, but now I think these are just the minis for D&D and that is a little weird to me because it's like you bought Out of the Abyss, this adventure from Wizards of the Coast, and then you went and you bought these minis that look like they are the minis for the adventure you bought, but when you open them up, Maybe you got the minis you need, maybe you didn't, because it's random, right? So that seems a little strange to me, but I don't actually, maybe that's not actually how it works because I never buy those minis. What I will do though, and what I recommend you do is go on eBay and buy pre-painted lots because what happens is people have been buying these minis for years, they played games with them, and now they're moving on and they're selling their minis. That cycle is always happening. There's always people getting out of whatever the hobby is that we're talking about and selling all their stuff on eBay. So you can find huge lots of pre-painted plastics. And typically they list every mini that's in the lot so you know exactly what you're getting or you could get minis specific individual minis online on eBay sometimes or there are websites there's miniature market and troll and toad and noble knight games and they often will have exactly the mini you want now these minis aren't spectacular looking they're pre-painted plastics they're painted by kids in China for next to nothing so it's hard to feel good about but they look okay they look better than probably what you would be able to paint on your own getting started but the great thing is they are official D&D &D minis 
which means you can find actual specific minis from the Monsters and the Monster Manual in plastic where you'd never be able to find them in metal. For instance, this guy, this is a Grick. This is unique to D&D. Uh, I'll put a picture of it up here in case you can't see it in the video. Good luck finding a metal version of one of these guys. Or these guys, the Slod. I love the Slod. My friend Jim watched the video where I said Slods and Bugbears were my favorite D&D monsters. And so he gave me some of his pre-painted Slods. Now, this is unique to D&D. Again, good luck finding a metal version. Go find a company that makes interdimensional toad demons. So that's the benefit of going online, going to eBay, or going to Miniature Market Troll and Toad, Noble Knight Games, and getting these pre-painted plastics is they are pretty good looking, and they are specifically for D&D. And the nice thing is, even though they're not the best paint jobs in the world, I recommend them at least for monsters, because a monster has a life expectancy of like, what, three, four, five rounds? A heroic mini is something that your players are going to use to represent their character for hours at a time, for weeks or months or maybe even years. So it's worth spending a little bit of money, I think, to get a good heroic mini. But if you just need a whole bunch of monsters cheap, I seriously recommend going on eBay. You can get a lot of really good, well-painted, hand-painted minis on eBay because there's always people getting, you may have to set up an alert and go back, like check once a week, but you will eventually be able to find a lot or even one, two at a time of really well-painted minis that somebody painted back when they played D&D. They're getting out of the hobby. They haven't played for a while. They went up in the attic and found all these and they said, hey, you know, I enjoyed playing this game. I enjoyed playing the, using these minis and painting them. I might as well sell them now and generate some revenue because I don't play that game anymore. And you benefit from that. You can get really great old minis. I remember there were companies like Ral Partha. You can still get their minis on eBay. Often people painted them, played with them, and are selling them now. I think Ralph Hartha made great minis. I have a lot of affection for old like Grenadier minis or Heritage minis. They are more primitive. They're not as good sculptures. They're not as good sculpts as we call them as now. Uh, but I think modern minis look a lot more high fantasy. And these minis, Grenadier minis, Heritage minis, even the Ralph Hartha stuff looks a lot more primitive. And as a result, I think it makes D&D seem a lot more grounded. And I like that style. I like that more grounded style of D&D mini, but I also like high fantasy stuff. I mean, it's all good. So apart from eBay, what's another great place to find games? Try your local game store. You can go to your local game store and they will often carry miniatures, often led, usually Reaper minis, but also stuff like Games Workshop. And you can sit there looking at the minis on racks and hold them in your hand and see exactly how they look. And I think there's an advantage there to seeing them online because for one thing, when you go online to search for minis, you're often searching a database. You're typing in the kind of mini you're looking for and you get a list of minis that meet that description. Whereas if you go look at minis in person, you end up, you know, browsing around and you find stuff you would never find otherwise. So going to a game store is a great idea. Another thing you can get at game store are these. Actually, this, this actual th game right here. This is the old, I think, uh, second edition. Uh, maybe the first, maybe this is the first edition talisman. Let's put a regular graphic up there so you can see it. This is a game talisman. It's a great board game. It's a fantasy board game. It's basically like fantasy monopoly. It's a lot of fun. I've had lots of friends. It's a great gateway game. If you've never played any fantasy tabletop games or you think tabletop games are basically like Monopoly and Clue. Talisman is a great way to get started. You pay, I think, 40, 45 bucks for it on Amazon, and you get 14 or 16 really nice fantasy minis. These are not painted, but they're really good sculpts. And you get a game, so you get a whole bunch of minis cheap. I think it ends up being like three bucks a mini. The game is fun, and you can repurpose the minis for your D&D game. They're mostly, Talisman I think is good for heroic minis. If you're looking for a mixture of heroic minis and monster minis, you can try Descent. Descent is a great game. It's basically a D&D simulation, right? There's an overlord who's the DM, and there are three or four players trying to make it through a dungeon. And not only do you get a whole bunch of really good plastic hero minis, you also get a bunch of monster minis. You get a bunch of giant spiders and goblins, I think, and I think they're undead in there. The game costs 60 to 70 bucks, and you get a whole bunch of minis, like 36 minis. It ends up being about $2 a mini. So it's a really good deal. And again, you get a game. So eBay's great. Your local game store is great. I think board games are a great place to get uh, good miniatures. But let's imagine you want to go online and look for a specific mini. Where's a good place to go? I recommend Reaper Mini. Reaper makes, I think, some of the best minis in the business. And they have a whole bunch of them. These guys have been making minis for years. They have hundreds. They may have thousands of different minis. They have great monster minis. They have great hero minis. They have great sculpts. I recommend their metal miniatures. They have a great miniature finder. You can type in like your character's race and class and what weapon they use, what armor they have, or their gender. And you can find a mini that gets you like 80 to 90% of exactly what you imagine in your head. They also have a line of plastics, not pre-painted plastics, just regular plastic minis called Bones. I have literally hundreds of these because I kickstarted their first Kickstarter. And when they arrived, I kind of, they were really cheap and you get a lot of minis and they look pretty good, but I kind of fell out of love with them when they arrived because they do have less detail than their metal versions. Like a plastic Bones miniature might not have facial hair where the metal version of that same character does. But again, they are fantastic. Uh, they look great. They're really cheap. You can usually find a lot of bones online on eBay, but you can buy them directly 
from Reaper Mini. Again, all these minis, a lot of them you can get from Troll and Toad, Miniature Market, Noble Knight Games. There'll be links in the doobly-doo. There's gonna be tons of links in the doobly-doo in this video. All of these services, all of these companies I have used and I'm recommending them. If you have sites online that you use, if you have services you use, please link them in the doobly-doo below. Actually, you don't get a doobly-doo, you get a comment. Please link them in the comments below because I would love to try them. So Reaper Mini is great, their miniature finder is great, they have a wide selection of minis, but there are lots of other companies that make fantasy minis, and in fact, I try to avoid using Reaper just because everybody else uses them. I want my game to look different. So I use companies like Other World Minis. Other World makes great old school minis. These are modern minis that they sell and make today, but they're all based on the art style of D&D from the original Monster Manual back in 1978. Again, I like that style. I like that simpler, more primitive style of character because to me, it's more evocative. It seems more grounded. And to a certain extent, I mean, maybe this is an argument in favor of Bones. Uh, the more primitive the mini is, the less detail it has, the more work my imagination does. It's one of the reasons I liked my knight mini with a helmet on because then he looked like whatever I wanted them to look like under the helmet. So other world minis, I recommend them. I've used them. Dark Sword minis. Dark Sword minis are fantastic. These guys make incredibly, I think maybe these are the best heroic minis you can buy online for your character. Every time my friends open up my miniature box and they see my mini, it's always the Dark Sword minis that pop out and they go, whoa, I want to play that guy. In fact, I don't know. I've always thought it would be cool to start a game by showing players the minis and saying, pick your mini first and then make your character based on that. I don't know why we never do that. I think often players get frustrated because they can't find exactly the mini that works for their character. And you wouldn't have that problem if you started with the miniature first. So Dark Sword minis are fantastic. They have officially licensed uh, miniatures based on classic fantasy artists, specifically D&D fantasy artists like Keith Parkinson and Jeff Easley and Larry Elmore. They even have a licensed line of George Martin Game of Thrones minis, if that's your thing. I ordered a bunch of minis from these guys and they threw in this great Mouse Man mini, which I got painted. I love these guys. And by the way, this is not in any way paid advertisement. None of these companies know that I am endorsing them here on my channel. These are all just companies that I have used and bought minis from and was happy with. Oathsworn minis. These guys make great minis, great sculpts. I think they're pretty obscure. I did one of their Kickstarters and got a whole bunch of awesome dwarves and halflings. They just finished another Kickstarter called Sensible Shoes 2, which is, you know, plausible, grounded female characters for fantasy. Sensible Shoes 1 was a Kickstarter and I think you can get all those minis now on their website. I think the dwarves, I contacted them about the dwarves and halflings. They said, unfortunately, the molds they use over time, they degrade. So you can't get those anymore. But I strongly recommend them. It's a tiny company. I think it's just two people doing the sculpts and their minis look fantastic. So you can get a bunch of really good, right now, a bunch of really good female characters that don't have like boob plate and high heels. They are sensibly attired, plausible female characters. Gale Force 9. Gale Force 9 makes amazing plastics. Again, not pre-painted plastics, but these are officially licensed D&D monsters and characters. So you get stuff like Actually, hang on one second. So these are all Gale Force 9 me's that I got painted. This is my purple worm, which I love. I try to bust out the purple worm at least once in every campaign. You can see this purple worm eating my friend Lars's character in our last stream. This is Lolth, the demon queen, in her, you know, half uh, drow, half spider form. You can see actually the mini broke and I had to glue it back together. This is a very, really delicate mini. Some of these plastic minis they make have so much detail in them that they have really little tiny spindly bits and they tend to break if you're not careful with them. But that's not the mini's fault, that's on you. That's on me, I broke this mini, not the people that made it. Here's the Umber Hulk mini that we used a couple of sessions ago. I got this uh, professionally painted. I got all these minis professionally painted because I am not this good a painter. This would take me forever and when I was done, it would look terrible. But I love these minis. I use them every time I get a chance. One mini and maybe the crown of my collection, one mini that I haven't gotten a chance to use yet because the players have never been high enough level is this little masterpiece. Look at this guy. Oh my goodness. Oh, I love him. Mwah, I want to have sex with him. Uh, this is such a fantastic mini. Uh, this is the Beholder mini from Gale Force 9 and I got it magnetized, which is a service a lot of companies that paint minis do so it's much easier to store this way there's just a magnet on the top of the pole and a magnet in the skull and it fits together and that way you can pick the mini up and move him around and the magnet holds the base to the thing it's really easy to do i can't wait to bust this guy out someday so these are all Gale Force 9 minis. I've never been let down by them. Their minis look fantastic. I strongly recommend them. And again, they are official D&D minis. So that's actually a real beholder. Here's another great product. It's called Total Party Kill by, I think it's 2C Gaming. I discovered these guys, like a talent agent. I discovered these guys at a local convention selling these packets. Each packet comes with a, a bunch of, this is not an adventure. This is a bunch of little tiny encounters that you can drop into any adventure, which I think D&D 5, by the way, desperately needs. There was a thing called the Book of Challenges for third edition. There was Dungeon 
Edition Delve for fourth edition. They are amazing little tiny encounters. You can drop into any adventure. You get this and you get a bunch of dungeon tiles. And these dungeon tiles, by the way, are specific to the encounters in the product you just picked up. And you can assemble them and run lots of combats with them, not just the ones in the little packet. Also, it doesn't stop there. You get this great, this is a uh, cut and assemble paper craft dark tower that I am totally gonna put together. We'll do in the terrain episode, which is not next, but soon, we're gonna talk about paper craft. I've done a little bit of paper craft. I have this great paper craft tavern that I look forward to showing off to you. And I look forward to building this. I'm sure it's gonna be super cool. They had a model of it at their uh, booth. You could take it apart, you could take the top off and look inside it, super awesome. And it folded up. That was a nice thing. Not only was it easy to assemble when it was done because it's all cardstock, you can then fold it up. It makes it easy to store. But the real reason I'm endorsing these guys, and because this is a miniature episode, it's on topic, is these little things. These little, I'll put a high, I'll try to get a high res image of it here. This is a little lizard man dude. This is a 2D mini that is appropriate to the encounters in the product, right? So you get all these little encounters, and every monster in there, there's a little mini for, and they, you know, you can assemble them, they cut them with little bases. They're easy to put together, easy to take apart. The only problem, of course, is they are def spatially deficient to the tune of one dimension, and they can suddenly become invisible for no apparent reason. But the, the paintings are really good. There's a front, there's a back. There's Lizard Men. Here's a little orc dude that I thought was super cool. There are character minis. Here's like, some of them are, are regular sized. Some of them are huge. This is a blue dragon mini, uh, which I thought was super cool. It's got a big base. And when you're done playing with them, you can just take them apart. It makes it easy to store. Super clever idea. 2C gaming, total party kill. Links in the doobly-doo. Also, don't be afraid to think outside the box. You know, my friend Jim has tons of great painted undead and lizard men, and I'm always envious because any undead we fight, he's got a great miniature for, and I'm like, God, it would take me forever to go on Reaper Mini and search for each one of those individually and buy them individually. But that's not what he did. He used to play Warhammer Fantasy, so he has huge Warhammer Fantasy armies. He has literally hundreds of undead of every different shape and size you can imagine. And that's a great way. There are always people online, on eBay, getting out of whatever game we're talking about, getting out of Warhammer Fantasy, getting out of War Machine, and hordes and they sell their they they played the game they painted the minis really well painted minis and they're done playing they've moved on they have different hobbies now and they're selling their minis so they got their money's worth and now you get a great deal because usually you can get really good painted minis well painted minis for less than the cost of the original lead and there are other fantasy games. I mean, mostly it's Warhammer Fantasy, but there was a great game by Rackham. Rackham not around anymore, but they made Confrontation. Confrontation minis are beautiful. They are fantastic. If you can find them online, if you can find them painted online, you are going to really impress your players because not only are they incredible sculpts and they're usually, you can find them really well painted online. They don't look like regular D&D minis. They have this great French kind of European fantasy look to them. And you can repurpose minis from other games. I play Hordes. I play Legion of Everblight and Trollbloods. So I've got a bunch of these little dudes and there are no stats for this guy in the monster manual, but that's fine. You could always just take like a goblin or cobalt stats and keep all the math, but apply them to this guy. And then when you put this guy in front of your players, they're going to go, whoa, what is that? They've never, if they haven't played hordes, they've never seen one of these things before. Now your D&D game looks unique. Or look at this little guy. I think this is a rake. I th actually, I think it's rake is a proper name from, uh, from hordes. So the guys, private here press make these guys. And I would probably take like uh, an orc and give this guy orc stats and maybe give him, I think orcs have a special charge ability, which is appropriate to a four-legged creature like this. These guys look great. Again, you put them on the table, you, you, you pick some monster from the monster manual, use the stats for it, but call this something different, and your players are going to be really impressed. And you can get these, there are, again, there are always people getting out of War Machine and Hordes, and that means you get to buy their minis cheap. Of course, if you can't find exactly the mini for your character online, you can go to HeroForge.com. This is a company that has like a 3D modeling software on their website that you can use to create a unique, specific mini for your character that looks exactly the way your character looks, 100%. I mean, they have a certain art style that maybe some people don't like. I don't know. My friends love them. I've ordered from them many times. I get the most expensive plastic detail, high detailed plastic that they make. It's actually kind of fragile. You can still see sometimes the printing lines because they are 3D printed. Then they don't always smooth out when they hit it with the UV. But most of my friends, you have to be somebody who's really into minis and the detail of minis before you would even notice it. My friend Phil has painted several of our minis. They look fantastic. Phil is a genius. He's actually a professional artist. So when that guy decided he wanted to paint minis, he kind of goes overboard. Uh, you know, I, I would take me, I would never be able to paint a mini that looked this good. It would take me years of practice to get to the point where I could paint a mini like this. So I'm incredibly grateful to Phil for painting our minis. It was He's just volunteering his time, and I, they look fantastic. The Hero Forge minis look great. Everybody was really happy with them. They cost about 30 bucks a mini, including shipping. And that may seem expensive. That I mean, I think you could probably get a Reaper version of your character for like eight bucks, maybe even less. But this mini looks exactly the way Baltar looks in Tom's mind. This looks exactly like Nosa.
right? With the beer stein and everything, come on. So I've used Hero Forge. I've bought several minis from them. It takes, I think, about three weeks to get your mini because they are super backlogged, but I've been happy with my purchase every time. It's worth noting, by the way, that every single mini that Phil has painted for us from Hero Forge has broken in the process. Typically, it's because his cat knocked it over or because somebody was cleaning, they knocked it over, but they are very fragile because the plastic, the, the high detail plastic ends up being pretty fragile. I've never had any problems with it. I've never actually sat down and tried to paint them. I'm sure once you start manhandling them and moving them around, there is a danger that the tiny little fiddly bits will break. But once it's been painted and sealed, it gets a little sturdier. And you should always pick your minis up by the base anyway, because that way the finger, the oil, the fingers from your oil, the oil from your fingers doesn't uh, wear off the paint. Speaking of paint, uh, how to get your minis painted. The easiest way, obviously, is to do it yourself. Painting minis is a fantastic hobby. I used to do it. I did it all the time. I never got that good at it because I didn't really start until I was in my, like, 30s. And I didn't have that much time. I think the best start to the best start to time, wow, the best time to start learning how to paint minis is when you're a teenager because you got plenty of time. Then by the time you're in college, you're at this great intersection of lots of free time and you've gotten really good at painting minis. And so for that period, the minis you paint are going to look fantastic and you will use them the rest of your life. As long as d, &D is your hobby, you'll be using these minis that you painted. So it's something that pays off forever. It's a great time investment. I quite enjoy my time painting minis. You put a movie on or some music and you just sit there for a couple of hours painting the mini. You learn the technique, you learn dry brushing, ink washing. This is not the how to paint your minis video because A, I'm not that good at it, but B, there are tons of great videos online. My friend Craig used the dip method. I'll try to make sure to remember to put a link in the doobly-doo to the dip method. You just paint, you, you give it a base coat, you put some primary colors on it, and then you dip it in this special varnish that's also stain, and it comes out looking pretty good. It takes like five or 10 minutes to paint your mini and then you stain it and it looks actually better than a lot of stuff that you start painting when you start off. So I do recommend if you have the time and the inclination, the act of painting minis, the hobby of it is very meditative. It's a lot of fun. And over time, you will get better at it. If you do not have time, if you are, for instance, a writer, which means you have the persistent feeling of always having homework due, then it may be worth paying someone else to paint your minis for you. I know there are people that think that's heresy. There are people online, this is no exaggeration, who think it is unethical for you not to paint your own minis because they're hobbyists, they're painting hobbyists, they think it is virtuous to paint minis. But I am not that good at it and I don't have that much time. And so for me, the value proposition of sending my minis off to get painted is actually very good. Let's start with the most extreme example. This guy, first of all, I could not do this. It would probably take me weeks before, and I'd have to start and stop again. I'd have to do, I would do a bad job, and then I'd have to get, I'd have to somehow get the paint off it with a plastic mini. That's not easy to do. If you use something caustic, you're probably gonna melt the plastic, and then I have to buy another plastic mini. So it was very cost efficient for me to send this off. I, this is gonna sound crazy. This cost $80 to get painted. This is the most expensive paint job I have ever paid for, but it was really easy. I sent it off, I gave him the money, I sent him a picture of it from the, this is, I just sent him the box, actually. I just ordered it, I sent him the box, I said, I want to look like this, and it does, right? Obviously, 80 bucks, I'm, I'm, I, I led with the most alarming thing because I didn't want to try to, you know, uh, I'm not trying to fool anybody with how much this stuff costs, but 80 bucks, that's, I've, that's it's a lot of money to spend on a mini. I've only done that once. More reasonably, this is a mini, I'll put another link over here to a high-res picture of it. This is a mini that I paid, I think, probably eight or 12 bucks for. This is just an elf character. I'm not even sure this is a good PC mini. This is more like an elf NPC, and this didn't cost that much to get painted with the mini. I think the entire cost was 20 bucks. 20 bucks for a good paint job, and I think this is fine, by by the way, you will see people in the link going, oh my God, you paid $8 for that, you got ripped off, whatever. I thought it was worth my money and I was happy with the results. But I'm not sure that would be a good paint job for a hero mini. This is something that costs a little bit more. Again, I'll put a link over here. And I have several minis like this. This, I believe this is a Dark Sword mini. And I was really happy with the result. This cost 20 bucks. So at this point now, keep in mind that this plus the mini was probably about $30, which is how much a Hero Forge mini costs unpainted. So again, I was really happy with this. I think if my character looked like this character, I would be very happy with this paint job. I recommend you go online and look for different services. And if you have service that you've used and you like, please let me know in the comments below because I would like to try different services. I have used paintedfigs.com and blue tape painting. And in both instances, I was very happy with the results. The more explicit I was with my directions, the happier I was. And I didn't mind. I listened to those guys, by the way, they tell me, they'll tell you if this is what you want, this is how much it's going to cost. I think a big part, you'll find people online that were unhappy with the results. And I think typically that's because they didn't understand what they were getting for their money. There are always different levels. And if you don't pick the right level, your mini is going to come back, not looking as nice as it could have. But like that Beholder mini, I paid for, I think it was level six at Blue Table Painting. I was really happy with what I got. But I couldn't find any reviews online of Painted Figs or Blue Table Painting from within the last year. So I'm not necessarily saying go use those guys. I think you should find somebody who has reviews from happy customers from the last six months, say. 
So I do recommend sending your minis off to get painted. There are lots of services online. I told you the two I used. I'll link to them in the doobly-doo below. But please, if you know of your own services that you've used, I want to hear about them because I want to try them. I always have minis that need to get painted. Always. 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 So that's the minis episode. We talked about where to get minis. We talked about eBay and pre-painted plastics. We talked about Reaper mini. We talked about websites like Troll and Toad, Noble Knight Games, Miniature Market. We talked about Dark Sword minis. We talked about Oath Sword minis. We talked about Otherworld minis. We talked about Gale Force 9. And what else? We talked about Hero Forge minis, getting your own custom mini made. We talked about painting your own minis. There are going to be lots of videos online teaching you how to paint. And we talked about sending your minis off to get painted. Again, make sure it's always caveat emptor, which is Latin for expect to get screwed about 25% of the time. I've never had a bad experience with an online paint store, but I will tell you that like if you have a thousand customers and you make 95% of them happy, that's an A plus job, but you just pissed off 5% of your customers. That's 50 people that are angry and are going to go online and complain about it. So find reviews online from independent sites, from people you trust, and then link them in your comments below because I want to see them. We'll talk about terrain and battle mats in another episode, and we'll do an episode after that talking about how to run tactical combat and keep it interesting and engaging. It's something I've been doing for a long time. I'm not a tactical genius, but I think my players do enjoy combat in my game because of the stuff I've learned over the years. But that's not the next episode. The next episode, hopefully this Thursday, is how to describe things to your players in either an engaging or straightforward manner, depending on the situation. Really, I think describing things to your players is like 90% of a DM's job, so it may be useful to have some advice there. So this was the kind of pragmatic, straightforward, how to make your game look nice episode. Next episode will be a little bit more advice on how to run the game, which is what this channel is about. Oh, uh, this came out, by the way. Evolve is now free to play, finally. You can play the game that I worked on for four years. My friends and I, we poured our hearts into this game. It has been completely revamped. Uh, every system in the game was retouched and redesigned to make it more straightforward, to make it easier to play. If you have a PC, it is free on PC. If you have some friends, it's a 4v1 asymmetrical first-person, third-person shooter, depending on who you're playing. The hunters are all spectacular and fantastic. If you have three friends, go jump on, play the hunters. If you don't have any friends online, you can always play the monster and just go eat the puny humans. I was the writer on Evolve. I created the world of Evolve, the setting, the universe of it. I worked on all the character backstories. I wrote like 95% of the characters' dialogue. It's how I met Matt Mercer and Liam O'Brien. As always, I am an independent fantasy author. That means I write fantasy novels and I sell them on Kindle direct. I have never tried to get an agent or a publishing deal because I don't believe in putting people between the creators and the work. Each book is $4, of which I see three bucks. So if you buy both books, you just gave me six bucks. And that revenue is what allowed me to get these nice new lights. I got a brand new camera. I'll put a picture of it here. I got an Elgato HD 60S capture card. It means I spend less time editing videos. It used to be my old camera, which looked quite nice. I could only record for 10 minutes at a time. The battery only lasted for 30 minutes. I had to swap it out. I had to record the audio and the video separately. And then at the end, I had to sync the audio and the video together and stitch all the 10 minute bits together into one line. It was a pain in the butt. So I don't have to do that anymore. I can just record for as long as I want and then edit it. And ideally, that means I spend less time editing and more time recording. Thanks to you people buying my novels. Thank you very much. Some people have bought them and read them. And them, some of those people liked them and wrote nice reviews. That's it. New video, hopefully Thursday, how to describe things to your players. Until then, peace out. <laughs>